Oh, 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 man. That really hurt my head. And I think this metal got the wrong idea. What you mean? I think he was misled. Uh, guys, the mics are hot. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. I'm JT Shea, and welcome to the magically unauthorized misadventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. Oh, yeah. Tell them about the who, the what, the why, the where, then the who's. You already said who. Who? You. Me. Yes. Oh, but I thought you said you. I got it, guys. This episode of the magically unauthorized misadventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle was recorded on June 11th, 2016, as part of the Good, the Bad, and the Geeky Live from Black Rat Comics in Hillard, Ohio. So, a big round of thanks to the 2015 Eisner Award-winning Pack Rat Comics. Who knew that you could get an award named after you for running Disney into the ground? Don't give me that look. Michael Eisner? He ran Disney before Bob Iger does that. Oh, man, tough room. Be sure to head on over to gbgpodcast.com for more information on how to see the show live, download past episodes, or describe to us on iTunes. And don't forget, reviewing our show is super important, too. Yeah, it helps other people find our show. They're right, you know. If you seem to really dig what Moose and Squirrel here are doing, then head on over to iTunes and review us. It really helps our show a lot when you do this. And don't forget that if you're in the central Columbus, Ohio area, come and see our show live, if you wish. August 20th at Pack Rat Comics. Or if you can't come, don't worry. You can still participate in the show by asking Bullwinkle... Mr. Know-It-All. ...a question. You can pull up d4k.us slash askmrkia in your computer or phone browser, or you can email us at rockyandbullwinkleshow at gmail.com. You good? Sure are. Okay, enough of us squawking. Squawk! Squawk! What are you doing now? But, but he said we're squawking. <sighs> a squawk, a squawk, squawk. Here's this week's episode of the Magically Unauthorized Misadventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. Squawk, 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 squawk. A thunder of jets in an open sky, a streak of gray and a cheerful... Hi, everybody! Hi, Rocky! A loop, a whirl, a vertical climb, and once again, you know it's time for... The Magically Unauthenticated Misadventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. Starring that supersonic speedster, Rocket J. Squirrel, and his pal, Bullwinkle J. Moose. Hurry, Bullwinkle, our show's about to start. But look, he kept our bad storytellers. What you mean by that? They only have one tail. Along with a host of others. Yeah, that was a bad one, wasn't it? It was really bad. It was a long flight from Dallas to Iowa, especially with two seatmates who looked awfully familiar, who pointed out some sad things to Rocky and Bullwinkle. But as Rocky and Bullwinkle gaze upon the airplane as it leaves them in a cloud of dust in an airfield in southern Iowa, they had a mission. Adventure! They had found clues on Google. Excitement! Yet something was troubling Rocky. Yet a moose craves nothy things. He does crave a Big Mac, though. Give me one of those and I'll be happy. Well, what's there to be happy about? Well, if you listen to that Parnell fella, apparently a lot of things. Oh? You know, Parnell. Since customizing ourselves to the Googles, I know that that thing will help us with our large bill. You know, let's get to that, you know, before we go any farther. Let's go. <sighs> Thank goodness. We're going to do a flashback. Please be kind. Rewind. For those who are new to our plucky pals, originally our heroes were the stars of the classic television series Rocky and His Friends on the ABC Network back in the day. He didn't say so at all. I did so. When? Just now. That doesn't count. But then we went over to NBC. Why was that? Let's just put it this way. The ABC and the ABC Network stands for Always Being Cheap. Which led the ABC Network executives with quite a problem. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> it's our show's equivalent of a flashback. The year is 1961, deep in the ABC Network's offices. Well, Edgar, here's something you don't see every day. What's that, Chauncey? <laughs> We had a show with two talking cartoon animals. But then they jumped ship, Chauncey. Besides the Flintstones, we need a talking animal show. The more animated, the better. One that kids will love. And adults will, too. Ladies and gentlemen. A shrewd southern talking fox. A good day indeed, fellas. A big old dumb talking bear. Uh, I'm sure I could be offended by that, but then, again, there are more pressing matters. <laughs> <laughs> Will you look at that, Edgar? There's something you apparently see a lot of these days. What's that, Chauncey? 
It's a talking weasel. I am the lawyer, Oliver Wendell Clutch. Entertainment lawyer and management for my clients. Colonel Montgomery J. Claxon, gentlemen. And this here, A. Claxon, gentlemen. Thanks, Colonel. I'm Calvin T. Burnside. And we'd like to pitch you a television show. How old? But you didn't even get to hear what we had to say. Let me work out the fine details. Carry on, gentlemen. Get your show ready. <laughs> ready it was. Calvin and the Colonel premiered October 3rd, 1961, leading the show stars to see their lawyer and manager. Well, Clutch, the Colonel here is in a mess. Well, well, well. What kind of mess are you in now, my dear Colonel? Well, I tell you, Judge, in no uncertain terms, the show's ratings were abysmal. And that means they probably won't get better. And that means the show will get canceled. A fate worse than death. How's that? He might even have to go back to work. Ooh. Well, sa- oh, well, Sally boys, there's nothing we can do. Well, why is that now? Because the Blue Winkle Show on NBC is your competition. And now, uh, no one needs no know any more talking about animal shows after your show bombed. But it's only our first episode. Well, wait till your second, then. That blasted moose and squirrel! Well, now, now, let's not be too hasty. And the Calvin and the Colonel show was canceled in two months. Stupid, Stupid moose, moose and dumb, dumb squirrel. squirrel. Friggin', friggin'. 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 That's so friggin'. 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 Like, how did you find out what happened? You mean you weren't paying attention? No, I was deep in thought, too, about why those birds are so angry. What birds? The birds in my phone. They're always so angry. <laughs> angry birds? Yeah, but then again, if you flung me out of a slingshot and I had to hit concrete walls... Oh, Bullwinkle. Then why do they hate pigs anyway? Bullwinkle. Wouldn't they team up to fight the humans? I mean, they're both on the food chain, Rocky. Bullwinkle. Well, well no, thank you. We must pay attention. Not now. Is, or, I mean, now is the time to listen to Nirvana, Rocky. There's exposition going on. As I was saying... And a few years after the downfall of the Calvin and the Colonel show, sadly the same fate befell our lads. NBC canceled us! In the subsequent years, things looked bad for our heroes. Their hometown of Frostbite Falls, home of acres upon acres of mighty redwoods and other trees, fell prey to deforestation. Reruns of the Rocky and Bullwinkle show were almost non-existent. Meaning we're not getting any royalty checks. Thanks a lot, Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network. Wait a minute, you mean someone's getting paid for this stuff? And without the notoriety that Rocky and Bullwinkle once provided, the peaceful, busying town became run down, poor and empty. But then once more, Hollywood came calling. In a move that no one could predict, except that one guy who sits in his basement all the time, on his movie blog website, our heroes were courted by Hollywood to make a live-action Rocky and Bullwinkle picture. Hello, Hollywood! But the film... Even with such classic stars as Robert De Niro, with help from that guy from Seinfeld who wasn't Seinfeld, and Rene Russo. Oh boy, she's that lady from Thor! Actually, she's done tons of films before that one. Like Thor 2! <laughs> yeah. That one. Wait, did you tell him that we had Robert De Niro? Are you talking to me? Oh, brother. Right, uh, sorry. I couldn't resist. Luckily, our heroes were able to save the day and stop the no goodnick animated and live-action versions of Boris Badenoff, Natasha Fatale, and Fearless Leader. The day was saved, and Rocky and Bullwinkle started a new television station called RBTV, which stands for Really Bad Television. If anything explained our old show well, it was that station on you. Frostbite Falls had all their trees replanted, protected under the state parks, and the city boomed with tourism. But... The live-action The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle had a film's budget of $76 million. Jump into Jehoshaphat! Indeed. And with the box office trend of television-to-film remakes, our valiant but plucky heroes didn't stand a chance and made a whopping $35 million at the box office. To make things worse, RBTV hit the skids soon after. Oh boy, we need a new pair of underwear. So now we owe Hollywood money. Though I'm more of a boxer moose myself. Don't remind me. I've been a bit worried. What, are the download numbers not looking good for our show? No, it's just that I... Because word of mouth helps with that. No, I was just trying to... No, you've got to be careful. We're a family show, Rocky. Uh, No, I was just saying that I am worried because I hope this periodic table business gets us all even keel with Hollywood. Oh, okay. That was a long one, boys. Yeah, it was. Join us next time to the magically unauthenticated misadventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle in an episode we'd like to call Getting Up to Get Down or The Uplifting Downwards Elevator. That was this week's unauthorized episode. Just a reminder that if you would like to download more past episodes, 
find out how to subscribe on iTunes, and more, please go to our website at gbgpodcast.com and click on the big letters that say Rocky and Bullwinkle. Just a little note that this podcast updates right here every Tuesday and is produced by D4K Studios as part of the GBG Presents podcast series. Did you enjoy the show? Maybe not enjoy it? Perhaps have a question or thought? Not sure who to talk to because your therapist ain't doing the trick? Well, email us at rockyandboowinkleshow at gmail.com. And don't forget about the legal mumbo-jumbo. Tonight's show features characters like Rocky, Bullwinkle, Boris, Natasha, Captain Peach Fuzz, and more, who are characters created by J. Ward Productions and are owned by DreamWorks and NBC Universal. Please don't sue us. We do this out of love of these characters. Yeah, but it don't matter to them, though. Yeah, I know. But on behalf of the cast and crew of this episode, which you can find on our, on our show notes, I'm JT Shea of the Drawing the Wrong Conclusions podcast and Night Gig Studios. You can visit us online at nightgig.com or check out our Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash nightgig. Good night, folks. <laughs>